Okay, um, we are in a residential treatment facility and this is going to be our third session meeting together and I'm going to do solution focused interventions. Okay. Hi Ellie, how are you today? Good, thank you. How are you? Good, thank you. Um, so this is our third time visiting since you've gotten here. Um, how are things going? Um, they're going all right. Um, you know, just trying to manage everything in my life right now. Trying to stay away from the drinking, but you know how that is. It's mm -hmm. not easy. It's not. No. Right. It's been messing up my life a little, but we're pushing through, I guess, as best as we can. Okay. Well, today we're going to talk a little bit about um, how we can help you reach your goal overall of sobriety. Um, so... Last week, we really talked about how one of your main triggers when you want to use alcohol is being bored. Um, so I would just like to explore that a little bit more today. So um, to start, I would just like to ask you, if you were to wake up tomorrow and you had no cravings, no urge to drink, what would that look like? What would be different? I think I would be back in school working to get my bachelor's in teaching and then I would eventually graduate and be working as a kindergarten teacher. I'd probably have a boyfriend, maybe a fiance because you know my boyfriend ended up leaving me last month. but. So yeah, we'll probably be together still thinking about marriage while working at school. Okay. So it sounds like you would be keeping yourself busy. Yes. With school and other things to do. Yeah, definitely. And then I think maybe my family would be more present. Um, like my parents really don't like to see me when I'm, you know, drinking. Mm -hmm. So you know, I do that quite often. So they're rarely around. Yeah, just don't want to feel like a disappointment anymore to my parents. Sure. So if you weren't drinking, do you think your parents would be more involved in your life? Definitely, because I know, like, like, I know I'm hurting them, but at the same time, I can't help it. So, like, it hurts me to hurt them, mm -hmm. but and I understand where they're coming from, but at the same time, they don't understand where I am mm -hmm. coming from, so... We butt heads a lot, so I know maybe if I was sober long enough, we would be able to talk it out and move on, but mm -hmm. yeah, sure. It's been tough. Yeah, it sounds like it. It can be hard when your parents want one thing for you and they don't understand where you're coming from. Yeah. So. Yeah, they don't understand that like, I can't help it. It's not me. It's like the alcohol and I don't know what to do. Like, I tried my hardest, but I always end up slipping. Mm -hmm. They just don't understand me. Yeah. That can be a frustrating thing when they don't understand what you're going through. Yeah. That's tough. Mm -hmm. um, was there ever a time in your life when you weren't drinking? Um, probably, like, my early teens. I was such a good kid in high school and like well, middle school. I was very dedicated to my work, I mean to my schoolwork and then like in sports and all that. You know, I was like your top student. So I feel like that's what like caused my parents to be like, whoa, what happened? Mm -hmm. I just got in with the wrong crowd and like the influences. I started working as a server and I was making a lot of money fast. So I thought like I was very powerful and I could just do whatever I wanted. Which ended up me meeting with like older people who would take me to bars, sneak me in underage, and I was drinking a lot. So I would say like right after high school. Okay, so right after high school is when things really started to go downhill. Yeah. Okay. Um, what I'm hearing is a theme of going back to what we talked about last week, the boredom. So mm -hmm. it helps when you're staying busy and you have things to do and you have good people in your life. Yeah, I think so. It's just kind of right now hard to build those relationships back up again. Like mm -hmm. I feel like now, I, now that I realize the people in my life aren't 
good people they're just like influences and like they're triggers to like want to drink more mm -hmm. and they encourage it more so just like working on building those relationships back up with like the positive people in mm -hmm. their life but it's hard because nobody really wants me in their life anymore because of all the, like, the damage that I've done um, previously. So it's just mm -hmm. working up the courage to like talk to my parents and like ask for like forgiveness. But I don't know how to do that yet. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if I'm ready yet. Sure. And it takes time to do that too. You know, on the other side of it, your parents might not be ready to hear that mm -hmm. from you. So um, the more time you need, you know, sometimes that might work out for the best. Um, you talked about having positive supports previously. Um, how do you think you could rebuild those relationships again? Um, the Well, like the relationships I really want to rebuild is mm -hmm. like with my parents and like with my siblings. Um, my siblings are younger than me and they had to see a bad side of me mm -hmm. so I'm somewhat like embarrassed sure. to see them um and, like my parents they did so much for me they like set me up in college they like paid for everything I literally didn't have to do anything until like I started like acting up and like rebelling so then they ended up kicking me out the house so I think I just have to work up the courage to talk to them to ask my parents and my siblings like for forgiveness mm -hmm and just go from there but like i said it's kind of hard to do that mm -hmm. so maybe if i like write it down first and maybe you can read it before i send it give it to them mm -hmm. give me some pointers absolutely because i don't know how to start mm -hmm. and it is a hard thing to do it's it it puts you in a very vulnerable position and it can be really uncomfortable for you and for your siblings and your parents. So it'll take time to get comfortable to do that. Mm -hmm. um, but we can work together and um, take time to get there. Um, so when it comes to staying on track with your sobriety and um, resisting temptations to drink, on a scale from zero to 10, how motivated would you say you are to remain sober? Zero being not at all, and 10 being I can stay sober forever. Um, I'd say maybe a six leaning towards a seven. Like, I know that I want to stay sober and I want to be sober because mm -hmm. it's, like, what's best for me and my family. But it's just so hard with all the, like, temptations. And when I know that I did get kicked out of my house, I live alone. And, like, I just go home and I'm by myself and I just start, like, overthinking everything. So, mm -hmm. like, it's very easy to, like, just grab the bottle. Mm -hmm. I'm 21 now, so, like, nothing is stopping me either. Like, yeah. there's no rules or anything, like, prohibiting me. So it's just such an easy access for me. Mm -hmm. And when, I, like I said, when I don't have anything to do, when I'm bored over or stressed, overwhelmed, it's so, like, I find comfort in it. Mm -hmm. So losing that comfort is going to be hard for me. Sure. So just, but I know, I know it's what I want to do. I just mm -hmm. don't know how I'm yeah. going to do it. Um, so it sounds like the temptations are what's holding you back from getting to a seven. Um, the temptations and overthinking things and the easy access now that you're 21. Um, what makes you say a six instead of a five? Um, because I know I want to be sober mm -hmm. more than I want to drink. It's just fighting the, like, overpowering feelings mm -hmm. that are causing me to drink. So I know I'm leaning more towards being sober. It's just learning, like, ways to stop from drinking. Mm -hmm. So like, I think I'm halfway there by realizing that I want to be sober. Mm -hmm. I just don't know how to be sober. Sure. Yeah, I agree. I think it's great that you recognize that this is something that you want for yourself. You're just not sure how to get there, which is what we're going to work on together. Okay. Um, 
So we've talked about a lot today. Do you need a water break or a bathroom break? Or uh, I think I'm good. Okay. Thank you, though. Yeah. Um, the weekend is coming up. Do you have any fun plans for the weekend? Uh, my little sister is performing in a holiday concert. Oh, really? Yeah, for school. So I'm going to go see her. But, of course, I kind of, when I go to these events, I kind of just stay away from my family so they don't mm -hmm. really know I'm there. But I like to think that one day I can, when I do talk to my family, I will let my little sister know I was there, mm -hmm. even though I was just in the background. So I think it's important for me to show up. Mm -hmm. So that should be fun. And, like, she's growing up so quickly, so, like, I don't want to miss out on these events just because of our problems. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited for that. Good. I think it's awesome that you're going to go um, and you're able to recognize that if your parents or your siblings know that you're there, it might not be a good encounter. Yeah. So um, it's great that you're not letting that be a barrier to you going. You're still going to go. So yeah. I think that's awesome. Yeah. Um, is it like a choir concert? Yeah, it's like when like they perform at school like together. Like okay. All the grades are singing the Christmas song. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of holiday spirit. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe not the best concert, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> gotta show up. Sure, sure. That's awesome. Okay. Um. So for next week when we meet at the same time. Um, one thing that I want you to think about and maybe write a paragraph about this, um, you had talked about how you want to mend your relationship with your family. I just want you to write a paragraph about what life would look like in 10 years from now if you did mend your relationship with your family in a year from now. So write about what life would look like if you had mended that relationship and just think about that. I think it might be a good motivator for you just to think about what positives can come out of this treatment program. Um, so like I said, we will meet next week at the same time. Okay. Okay. I'll see you next week. All right. My pair. All right. Thank you. Thank you. I need your password.